In this video, we're going to look at solving compound inequalities. So before we get into more complicated examples of compound inequalities, we're going to look at a couple simple examples so we can understand the graph. Um, we're going to be graphing these the solutions to these compound inequalities on a line graph. So here's my first example. We're going to graph the solutions that would make this true. X is less than or equal to negative 3 or x is greater than 8. So what makes this a compound inequality is the fact that this or is present. Um, the other example is going to be and. So for a compound inequality, the ones that we're going to be working with anyway, um, these are the two words that you'll be looking for. They'll either be an or between two inequalities. You know, here x is less than or equal to negative 3. That's one inequality x is greater than 8, that's another inequality. The fact there's an or in there makes it a compound inequality. Um, and then the other word that we're going to interpret differently is the word and. Okay, here we go. So we're going to focus on the word or. So we're looking for all the x values that are less than or equal to negative 3 or greater than 8. It could be either or. So what we're going to do is we're going to graph these on this number line. Now there's a, few, a couple different ways to graph on a number line whether you have the equal to part or not or don't have the equal to part in the current textbook that I'm using they use the bracket and the parenthesis so we know all the numbers that are less than negative 3 are from negative 3 here and down this way okay some books they'll use a solid dot right here like as I said the book I'm using now uses a bracket right on negative 3 as opposed to the second part of this inequality, here, we'll do that. That's the red part there, and we'll do this in blue. The second part of this compound inequality, let's make a prettier, a prettier set bracket. That wasn't as very pretty. There we go. The second part of this, x is greater than 8, um, has to be bigger than 8. So 8 is not in the solution. Because 8 is not bigger than 8. If x was 8, it would say 8 is bigger than 8. That's not true. So we don't want 8. We want things that are just barely bigger than 8. Um, and how do we plot that? You know, 8.1, 8.01, 8.001. 1. There's really no way to plot that on this number line. So what we do is we use a parenthesis on the 8 like that. And then that means, that means right up to but not including 8. And then a line going uh, towards all the numbers bigger than 8. The other books, uh, in the other book that you have, it may use uh, instead of a, a closed dot, like we said for the negative three. Uh, let me bring in another graph, and I'll show you. That's going to be. Oops. Let's try that again. Let me bring in another graph, and I will show you the other version, the closed circle, and headed that way, or the other way is a open circle on 8 headed that way. So these are two different versions for this compound e inequality up here. Now since x can be less than or equal to 3 or greater than 8, this <coughs> excuse me, this graph is the entire solution. So everything less than or equal to 3 and everything greater than 8 is all included in the solution. Something I want to remind you of is something called set builder uh, notation. Now set builder notation would look like this for the solution. We would say the set of all x such that x is less than or equal to negative 3 or x is greater than 8. And you might say, well, that's kind of weird. That was the problem. And you're right, it was. But we're going to be doing some more advanced ones here in a minute where um, the answer is going to look like this, but the problem didn't start that way. And then the other way that we can write our answers is something called interval notation interval notation let me write this up here this was set builder notation here interval notation for our first interval um, our, our red points down here they go all the way down to negative infinity and they come up to negative three and then and I'm just using different colors to you know help it match the graph but and then we go from 8. I'm using a parenthesis on 8 because I'm not including 8. I use a hard bracket on negative 3 because I am including negative 3. 
So in interval notation, these, these brackets and parentheses are going to match your graph, and that's headed all the way up to positive infinity. I, now, usually for infinity and negative infinity, you're going to see a parenthesis. Since it's an or, I want to take all the red solutions, all the blue solutions, and put them together. That's called a union, and hopefully you've studied that before you got to this point. And the symbol for union is a U like that. Or is associated with U for union. On the other hand, in a minute we're going to look at an and, and that's associated with intersection. Okay, let's try an and one. Let's look at uh, another example. So let's get rid of all this. And let's do an easy and problem just to see what the graph looks like. Okay. Let's say I want to graph all the x's where x is less than 5 and x is greater than 2. x is less than 5 and x is greater than 2. All right, so if I look at the values where x is less than 5, I would do a parenthesis on 5, and then I would go this way, because that's everything less than 5. If I look at the values where x is greater than 2, that would start on 2, and it would head this way. But what I want is all the values that are less than 5 and greater than 2. And as I said a minute ago, and means the intersection. So the numbers that I'm looking for have to meet both these criteria. Where the intersection in our graph can be seen is right there where the red and the blue overlap. So what we would want to do for our solution, let's use purple, our solution would be where these overlap. So soft bracket on 2, hard bracket on 5, and everything in between. Since it's an AND, it would be where they overlap. Now, if it was an OR, it would be everything on the number line because everything got covered. If it's an or, it's the union of uh, all the red points and all the blue points. But since it's an and, it's just that intersection. So for interval notation, we would simply write 2 comma 5 bracket. That would be interval notation. Set builder notation, we can write a little more concise way than the original problem is stated. Be the set of all x such that, and then we can write this combined inequality, 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 5. So this means basically x has to be between 2 and 5. Okay, well let's look at an example where we start with a little more complicated uh, set of inequalities. How about 3x plus 2 is less than or equal to negative 7. Or, now this is important, whether there's an or or an and is going to make a big difference in how we write our solution. Negative 2x plus 1 is less than or equal to 9. So what we have are two separate inequalities, almost like two separate equations, except for there's less thans in there, so they're inequalities. And what we want to do first is solve each of these separately. So we're going to solve them just like we did uh, before. And if you're doing compound inequalities, I can guarantee you, you've done just solving inequalities before. So if this is something you need review on, you'll you want to look at your book or some somewhere and some video and find uh, just solving inequalities without the word compound in there to review. I'm going to start over here. We're going to get x by itself. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. And hopefully this part is a little bit of second nature to you. So we get uh, 3x is less than or equal to negative 9. I need to get x by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And I get x is less than or equal to negative 3. Now just for practice, if you want to pause the video and solve this other side, that would be a good idea. That would be good practice if you think you need it. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And that gives me negative 2x is less than or equal to 8. I need to get x by itself, so I'm going to divide by negative 2. Now, do you remember what happens with an inequality when you divide by a negative? 
Hopefully you remember, this is the only thing that's different about solving inequalities versus solving equations. Well, I take that back. The way you write the solution is different and the meaning of the solution is different, but in the actual solving process, you solve an inequality the same way you would solve it if this was an equal sign, with one exception, and that is right here. If you divide or multiply by a negative, you have to flip the inequality sign. See how it was a less than? Now I wrote it as a greater than, and I did that because I divided by a negative number. I divided by a negative. If you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to flip that sign. Notice over here on, on the first part, um, I, I came up with a negative answer here, but I wasn't dividing by a negative, so I didn't flip the sign. It's not whether the answer is negative, it's what you're dividing by. Let's finish up over here. 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4. Okay. Next, we want to make sure we bring down this or to help us interpret our solution. So we're looking for all the values of x that are less than or equal to negative 3 or greater than or equal to negative 4. Or means all of it. That's the union. So every number that's less than or equal to negative 3 combined with every other number that's greater than or equal to negative 4. Let's look on a number line and see what we got. So x is less than or negative 3 is going to be all these guys. x is greater than or equal to negative 4 is going to be all these guys. Everything's covered. The whole entire number line is covered. So how are we going to write that solution? Well, if I had to graph the solution, I would just graph a number line with a line like that and cover everything. I'd probably take out these little brackets. As I, you know, if I was writing my final answer, it would look more like that. If I were to write this in interval notation, well, it'd be everything. So it would be everything from negative infinity to infinity. If I was writing set builder notation, well, we could get fancy here. We could say the set of all x such that, and we could write x is a real number, which means basically all the numbers on the number line. And then the fancy way would be the set of all x such that x is an element of the real numbers. That's kind of fancy. That e means element of the real numbers, just means x is a real number. Well, that was kind of a weird solution, but that can happen. We could get any number will work. So what this means is if I pick any number on this number line, it's going to either satisfy this equation or, excuse me, this inequality or that inequality. It's going to satisfy one of them. Let's try an and problem. Okay, let's try. Um, let's just do a fairly simple one here. X, X minus 3 is less than or equal to 6 and x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 7. So I think it would be a really good idea to pause the video and solve these two inequalities. should just take you a minute. Okay, let's solve them. These are only one-step inequalities. So for this one, we're going to add 3 to both sides, and for the other one, we're going to minus 2. So we end up with x is less than or equal to 9, and x is greater than or equal to 5. So now that we get it down to this point where we have x isolated, now we bring in the graph and we take a look at what we have. x is less than or equal to 9. We're going to use the bracket and we're going to go this way. x is greater than or equal to 5. We're going to use our bracket. Let me extend my purple arrow out because I stopped right at 5, which is kind of in the way of what I was doing. So let's extend that out this way. Okay, and x is greater than or equal to 5 here to there. Remember what and means now. This is the key to interpreting the solution. We want all the numbers that meet both this criteria, numbers that are both less than 9, less than or equal to 9, and greater than or equal to 5. Well, they live right here where the purple and the, what is that, green, overlap. So my solution is everything between 5 and 9. So 
the way I would want to write that on a number line for my answer, a little bit cleaned up here, would be just starting at 5. Let's get my pen back. There we go. Starting at 5, going up to 9. You might want to use colored pens when you do do these kind of problems. It sure makes your line graphs look nicer. Um, otherwise, you have to kind of write above the line so you can see the difference between your line and your answer. Can you think how to write this in interval notation? Hopefully you can, interval notation. Starting at 5, going up to 9, that's interval notation. With interval notation, make sure you always write your smallest number first. And don't get it confused with an ordered pair. Um, of course, these are brackets, so it doesn't really look like an ordered pair. But if I were to change this just a little bit, like let's say my solution came out, this is a whole separate problem, okay? Let's say this, my solution came out like this to some problem, this green thing. And I, w I was going to write the answer to that in interval notation. So I'd write parenthesis, negative 7, comma, negative 4, parenthesis. That looks a lot like an ordered pair when you're plotting points. You know, uh, left 7, down 4 on one of these guys. Um, that is not what this means. So you have to make sure that you're understanding the context of what's happening. This is interval notation, so it's totally different than ordered pair, even though it looks exactly the same. And the way you know which one it is is by the context of the problem. What kind of problem is it? Set builder notation. All right, last thing. Can you think of how to write this in set builder? I don't want to use that color because that's going to confuse you with this one I just did. Let's go back to our blue. The set of all x such that, remember how to write this nice and neat? If your x is basically between 5 and 9, start at 5, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 9. So my x value is between 5 and 9 and including 5 and 9. So what that means is if you pick some number between or including 5 and 9, let's just pick one. How about 6? Six? 6 would definitely meet the criteria of being between 5 and 9 or including 5 and 9. If I put that 6 in for x, I'm going to put a 6 in x there, I'm going to put a 6 in for x there, it will make both of these true. It will make this inequality true and this inequality true. If I put 6 in here, I get 6 minus 3 is less than or equal to 6. That is absolutely true. Oh, man. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's one of the problems of working uh, on your computer. and Stuff pops up and you don't want it to. Um, it's absolutely true. If I put 6 over here, 6 plus 2 is greater than or equal to 7. 6 plus 2 is uh, 8. That's greater than or equal to 7. So that makes that true. Any number I pick between 5 and 9 is going to make both these true. And that's what makes it the solution to this compound inequality. Well, I hope that helped, and keep practicing these. Remember, solving them is a lot like solving equations, and just remember to flip your sign if you multiply or divide by a negative.